So we're going to be presenting a case of splenic artery embolization. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so it's a 65-year-old gentleman who came to us referred by his hematologist for autoimmune hemolytic anemia. He was first uh, diagnosed in 2018 when he was hospitalized for pneumonia. Malignancy workup at that time was negative. Um, he's received multiple different medical therapies, initially treated with rituximab as a thioprene, celsep, danazole, and steroids. The rituximab was ineffective and, and was stopped, as was the azathioprine and celsep. He developed leukopenia. Uh, during the past two years, he's had multiple hospitalizations that were requiring transfusions. Uh, his nadir for his hemoglobin was 2.7, and that, that was back in July of this year, and he required five units of PRBCs and a hospitalization. Um, his past medical history is as below, hypertension, COPD, coronary artery disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Next slide, please. Uh, he's had no surgeries, and his medications are listed there. He's still on the prednisone and the danazole. Oh, really? Next slide, please. Uh, his labs uh, for the pre-procedural workup are as follows. His hemoglobin was 8.9, hematocrit 27. His white blood cell count was 0 0.7. His platelets were 236, creatinine 0 0.8, 0 .8 INR 1.2. Uh, his vitals were as below, um, and this was his physical exam. Thank you. Um, so for our assessment and plan, this is a 65-year-old male with medical refractory transfusion-dependent autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Uh, the patient did, want, did not want to have a splenectomy and wanted to try a minimally invasive option first, so we are proceeding with a transradial selective splenic artery embolization. Um, I'll show you what, actually, Joe, if you want to show them what we've done so far. Um, Joe can go through what we've done. Sorry. Um, so at this point, navigating the arch, this patient actually does have a fair amount of can we draw the uh, of tortuosity in the arch, um, Laval. And so we were able to pass uh, the Sarah down fairly easily. Uh, selecting the celiac while we were dealing with the tortuosity um, was a bit difficult. We ended up using um, the microcatheter from the aorta through um, our guide cath, our JR4 that we have down. So Joe, Joe, were, were you able to engage the celiac with the Sarah, or or is is that the cine where you're where you're flipping out? Oh well, we did engage it with the Sarah, and we had it selected. Um, but you can actually see um, just right right over the the cardiac silhouette there, there is a fair amount of tortuosity. So um, we switched out for the for the JR and microed our way in. Um, so some tortuosity in the in the proximal splenic there. Um, large spleen and since that time we've selected our way out to a lower pole vessel and that's where we're parked at this point so for for a case like this when you're doing partial splenic embolization just as a gestalt how much of the spleen do you want to take 20 percent 40 percent 50 percent and how are you setting this case up to achieve that that goal so uh, the way I, I tend to look at this is I would want to take at least 50%, aiming for 60 to 70%. It doesn't always work out that way, just given the arterial anatomy. Um, so uh, that's sort of what I, I, I go for. It can always come back and do more. It's hard to obviously undo it if they get really sick. Um, we tend to aim for the, the lower pole and work our way up, as opposed to upper pole and work our way down. Um, decreases the risk of um, roof um, what do you call it? Reflex effusion in the left and the right uh, left lower lobe or left lung, um, and, and that's sort of how uh, I, I approach it. Um, so, when in in our practice and um, what we've sort of moved to, and obviously we talked about a little bit of a cost earlier this morning, but this is not necessarily the most cost effective way. But uh, we've moved towards using more of uh, onyx or copolymer. What we have found in a lot of these patients is actually that the uh, post embolic syndrome is significantly less. They don't seem to feel it as much. Um, we did not describe this. Actually, it was described, I think, by the group out of Jefferson in, in about four or five cases. We've done probably about 15 or 20 cases, uh, not necessarily for this indication, but for patients with different versions of big spleens that need to be embolized, and, and it seems to have worked uh, worked well. We had a durable result, um, and they're usually able to go home, actually, the same day. 
And so that's how we approach it. So, you know, we have a, uh, a, a low flow microcatheter, a 2.4 French uh, prograte out, uh, which is DMSO compatible. We've actually loaded the DMSO. Uh, I've drawn up my, my Onyx and we have, uh, we're sort of ready to, to rock and roll here. And so yeah, that's what we'll do is we'll do this branch. We'll come, uh, but luckily since we have the guide, we don't actually have to pull everything out because I'm, I'm a little concerned we're going to lose access if we try to pull everything out. Um, and then what we're able to do, you can, here you can see the Onyx start to come out. Um, again, going very, very slowly, trying to push it distally. This is Onyx 18. Um, probably could have gone away with 34 just given where we are, but I already kind of drew up the 18. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll do this and we'll do this branch. And then we'll come uh, come back and then try to, I think there's one more branch we want to we wanna hit. And uh, we'll take that one. Um, no, I, I, I get it. You're, you're, it eventually... you're using the onyx like it's glue, yeah. exactly. basically, here, which is a very interesting technique. But the fact that there's there a, yeah. a stopgap between the you know trifurcation, bifurcation, and the tip of the catheter, it, it's really fascinating. If I like where we're done, if we think we're going to move forward, it didn't fill as much as I thought it would. I think maybe we'll do 34 in the next go around. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I think we need to push more. I agree with you. I would do a little more here. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we did it with a guide as opposed to just a straight uh, diagnostic catheter. Um, so I'm not as worried about getting something stuck on the tip, right? Uh, here. Uh, but yeah, we would, you know, we would make sure there's nothing in the catheter. We would do it under aspiration, uh, maybe even send a Benson wire. Uh, down. So this is just the DMSO. I'm hopeful just to get away with just one CC of Onyx 18. Although I think we're going to need another one. What do you think? I think you look pretty good, Rahul, honestly. I mean, that's, that that's, yeah, good, that's a good 25% yeah. of the spleen you got there, you know? We may actually not have to go for a second branch. I, I yeah. may... A little hard because he's breathing a lot, but actually that's a decent amount of his spleen right there. I agree with actually, you. Actually, I think we may just I, pack I a little bit of Onyx 34 on top. Yeah, so he already had the Pneumovax from before, so that, that wasn't an issue. Um, the um, We gave him a dose of ceftriaxone. Our plan is to be do, do give him about two weeks of Leviquin uh, when he goes home. Uh, pain medicines, you know, he's already on steroids. So I don't really think he needs to give be given more uh, steroids on top of it. I think we're going to stop here because I don't know where I am exactly. I don't want to keep pushing Onyx if I don't know where I am. So Got it. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, it's a little bit more upper pole than I wanted, but it's still majority sort of like posterior. Yeah, so radial is a great option because we don't have to give them platelets or don't have to worry about their transfusion. You know, we've done radial access in patients with platelets that are very, very low. You know, um, and we can always give them the platelets on the back end. We've, I think, we've talked about or published um, about even giving, you know, patients who are on Coumadin, fully anticoagulated, um, elevated INR from liver disease. We really haven't been transfusing well on the front end. We've really been sort of correcting it on the back end as needed, and it's pretty rare that we actually need to correct it on the the back end.